We just got a letter. We just got a letter. We just got a letter. Wonder who it's from. And I'm Chris Roberts. Well, Chris Roberts is in fact alive. We just got given the newest letter from the chairman. This is a letter that's written by Chris Roberts and talks about the state of the game and the company as it stands. And this one might be the most important one that we've seen yet. It's quite a long one, so we're going to go through it, talk about some of the things, and I'm going to share my opinions on some of the stuff that Chris brings up. The letter starts with a year in review. In this, Chris talks about how the company has tried to overcome COVID, especially within the past year. He talks about the trends that he's seen in the industry, where people haven't been transitioning back into the office, and the delays that that has caused. If any company knows about delays, it's CIG. So because of that, they've been working towards a global flexi hours schedule, but their focus is definitely on returning people to the office. He also goes on to talk about all of the features that were released in Star Citizen in 2021. He does a quick recap of each patch that was released within the last year and talks about just how much content is now in Star Citizen. He talks about the success of the dynamic missions, Orison, the gas clouds, medical gameplay, looting, bombing, personal inventory, and their very successful attempt at reducing crashes. A very important thing that he talks about is that in the end half of 2021, apparently, Star Citizen was more popular than it had ever been before. Both the amount of new players joining into the game and the amount of active players in the game skyrocketed. According to his own words, 317 is seeing over 2,000 new players a day and their daily active users has grown over 50% since December 2020. He also mentions, of course, that we are very, very close to the $500 million total revenue. He then goes back and has a little bit of a reflection over many of the issues CRG have had in the past. Missed deadlines, missed products, but always coming back to the support of the community. Many that have financially supported Star Citizen do not care about profits or quarterly earnings. They just want the best and biggest game possible, one that lives up to their expectations and dreams. While that is no small task, it is something that is far easier for myself and everyone at CRG to put all of our effort into, as it is a privilege to be challenged artistically and supported financially in this matter, and I am immensely grateful to have so many people put so much faith in all of us. A pretty good start to the letter, nothing really that I could disagree with honestly. I have been saying for a little while now that last year seems like it was by far the best year in Star Citizen, and it's good to see that the growth of the player base is now arriving. But next up, we have some real big news. Chris starts off the next section by talking about 3.0, the last major patch in Star Citizen almost five years ago. And the reason he is talking about that is it looks like we really are on the cusp of 4.0. That's right, server meshing, it's coming. If you don't know what server meshing is, basically it is the fundamental thing that will turn Star Citizen into an MMO. Get out of your ship, log off, your ship is still there when you log back in. Crash your ship. The wreck of the ship is still there when you log back in. Throw a gun on the floor. Fly away for two years. Come back. The gun is there. Now, the problem has always been, sure, we could do that, but the game would run terribly. Server meshing and all of the properties surrounding it have been the most important roadblock for Star Citizen. A big part of that is persistent entity streaming. Chris Roberts goes on to say, It fundamentally changes how we record state in the universe and delivers a level of persistence that you just don't see in other games, whether they are MMOs or even single player experiences. Attached in the document is a road to persistent entity streaming road map, and it's quite large, so let's go through it really quickly. The graph goes through everything that they've done since roughly 2018 to go towards the goal of server meshing. There's a lot of descriptions underneath about what everything here means. We're mostly gonna be looking at the top. If you look at where we are today, very recently, persistent streaming was integrated, and very soon, it looks like we will be getting the first build on PTU for persistent streaming. With 3.18 arriving a little bit later than normal, we'll get to that soon, persistent streaming should be arriving this year. And it seems like on this roadmap, they look to have server meshing ready, at least for some player builds, at the end of this year, start of next year. Their main goal is next year to just be improving these replication layers. The most important part about this section about server meshing is when Chris Roberts says this. I am happy to report after 16 months of extremely focused work by 18 engineers, three dedicated QA and four producers spread between CRG and Turbulent, that the team were able to demonstrate persistent entity streaming working last week in our weekly internal persistent universe update meeting. He goes on to explain exactly how they showed that it worked, including doing some stuff in the verse 
completely killing the client in the server, bringing it back up, and all of those items still be there. I know the magic word has always been server meshing is coming soon, but we actually get to see progress now. All we've ever gotten from CIG is server meshing is coming. Don't worry. We got a little bit of an explanation on how the back end of it works, but we never heard anything about the tech itself, and now it works. Now, obviously, once again, we're still in early stages, but in the grand scheme of things, we're not. We're kind of reaching an end goal here. So hopefully progress continues, server meshing continues to be worked on quickly, and uh, we get to get Pyro soon. Now, a little bit unfortunate, a little bit good stuff. Because of this new tech, 318 is going to be pushed. The reason for this is both Cargo Refactor and the Salvage gameplay loop were designed with persistent entity streaming in mind. So right now, 318 is going to be pushed to PTU likely at the end of Q3 this year. But we will be getting a 317.2 in July. And according to Chris, it'll have new missions, new locations, and other gameplay. The reason this is also kind of good news is there was a lot of speculation that there was no chance we were going to get both Cargo and Salvage in 318. One of them had to be dropped. Doesn't look like that's the case anymore. In fact, it looks like we might be getting a little bit extra stuff, maybe. Hold your breath. And as a little bit extra, those of you that know about Gen 12 Renderer and Vulcan will be happy to know that apparently they're going to bring majority of that online with 318. This means better performance, better looking graphics. Can't argue with that. 318 is looking to be an enormous patch. I know that 4.0 is supposed to be when pyro slash server meshing comes out, but 318 itself is kind of its own 4.0. We then go to talk on specifically server meshing and 4.0. Now, if you've been following Star Citizen all, you know that 4.0 is supposed to be the patch where Pyro releases, but we've been told Pyro won't release until server meshing is ready. They're one and the same. Following the roadmap, we know that Pyro is borderline complete. The planets, the foliage, missions are in progress, but they want server meshing ready before bringing Pyro into the PU. Well, as I was just talking about, Persistent Entity Streaming is working, which means server meshing is not very far behind. So according to Chris, as long as there's no major issues with PES, we're going to see Pyro quarter four this year, probably quarter one next year. Chris says, once server meshing starts to see real world testing with thousands of players in PTU, we will get a better idea of how much time it will need to cook in PTU before it can make its way to live. We are aiming for the end of Q1 2023 but again, we really will not know with confidence until it hits testing. All of this means the release schedule this year of patches is going to be a little bit different to what it has been in the last three years. We're still getting some major patches and we're still getting Invictus and IAE, but 318 really is going to be the cornerstone patch of this year. In fact, it sounds like there's not going to be a 319 at all. It sounds like we're going to be going from 318 to 4.0. Now, of course, CRG have a history, removing, pushing patches, all of that stuff but I have never seen them this confident about getting something out. Of course, it's still CRG, maybe push everything six months, but I think 3.18 is going to be impressive. And I think 4.0, we won't see this year, but the start of next year, we're gonna be in Pyro. Away from the gameplay stuff, we move over to what's happening with the company. Some of you may know that CRG have begun to expand and they've created offices in both Manchester and Frankfurt. These offices are still underway, but within the letter itself, we can see a couple of pictures of the work in progress. And based on these pictures, in my opinion, they're probably not too far away from moving in, maybe a couple of months. He talks a little bit about the amount of staff that they have right now. Chris says, Today, we have 780 people on staff, plus an extended family of over 130 working closely with us at Turbulent in Montreal, with many more that will join us in the coming months. We have a seven-person global talent acquisition team that focuses exclusively on trying to hire the best talent possible for CRG. In 2022, we will continue to grow in all departments, increasing our headcount to approximately 840 and bring us closer to release for Star Citizen and Squadron 42. If you had told me the first time that I had ever heard about the Star Citizen Kickstarter, that they would have 840 employees, I'd maybe believe you, I don't know, it's kind of crazy, but it's super cool. There's also a small mention of them considering changing the location of the Austin studio and the LA studio as well. The next big thing is CitizenCon. 
Now, CitizenCon is the largest Star Citizen gathering every single year towards the last quarter. It is usually the way that CRG show us the best and coolest things that they've been working behind the scenes. Unfortunately, during this letter, they reveal that CitizenCon will once again not be physical this year due to things happening in the world, as well as this big push towards Squadron 42 and server meshing. This means there will be no keynote gameplay demo. It's really sad because the one last year was really, really cool. But at the same time, if it means 4.0 comes out sooner, awesome, cool. Going to Pyro in the PTU will be my gameplay demo. Now they still will be doing a Citizen Con, but apparently with a heavier focus on the community. The end of this year, after all, is the 10 year anniversary of Star Citizen. There will still be panels and presentations from developers. And so we are still going to be getting shared a fair bit of progress about the games. Just don't expect a real big flashy video. <laughs> and possibly the most interesting part of the chairman's letter, a mention of Squadron 42, in that there's no mention of Squadron 42. Chris says, and as I noted back in my December 2020 letter, we are still going to be quiet on Squadron 42 until it is time to start the release campaign. And we are not quite there yet. Know that progress is coming along nicely, but we're not quite ready to pull the curtain back on Squadron just yet. No news is good news, right? Or news about no news is good news. What? Chris then goes to talk on a little bit about bar citizens. Bar citizens are smaller gatherings of star citizens across the globe. There's going to apparently be some special bar citizens centered around the locations that the developers are, and they want to start International Bar Citizen Day. <laughs> apparently there'll be some more information about those on Spectrum. Chris finishes off the entire letter talking about just how important every single one of the devs are, as well as the players and the community. Without these, there would be no Star Citizen, no Squadron 42, and no Cloud Imperium games. As we move closer to achieving the critical milestones outlined above, we cannot help but feel an immense amount of appreciation for each and every one of you who shares in the collective dream of Star Citizen. The path ahead is more vibrant than ever, and in some ways the collective journey together, the moments and fun that people have along the way as we build Star Citizen together is as rewarding as the ultimate destination. And that is what makes this game and community special. Star Citizen is headed for a major milestone. And I think Chris has done a really, really good job of telling us that concisely as he could. It's quite a few words. We're at the stage where we're seeing the game come to fruition. Just ask every single new player that's joining the game in 317. I bet half of them don't even know who Chris Roberts is. I'm looking forward to the next year. I hope you guys are too. If you have any comments about what happened in this letter from the chairman, make sure to put them in the comments below. If you liked the video, give it a like, subscribe, hit the notification bell to know when I'm making another video. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'll see you guys in the verse. The game being built today is a game that encompasses many. It is a dogfighting space sim. It is a first person shooter. It is a trading game, a resource collecting game, a resource management game, an adventure game, a survival game, and a social game. Star Citizen is a universe sim. It is a game for everyone, as in real life, there are many different paths to walk, and success is defined by what makes you happy.